From the Intellifluence headquarters in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona, this is the Intellifluence Influencer Spotlight. In each episode, we sit down with an influencer from our network and we discuss their background as well as their unique approach to influencer marketing. Dustin Ramsdale lives in Baltimore City with his family and is the creator of a blog called Higher Ed Geek. Dustin works in digital education, believing everyone deserves access to high quality educational opportunities. Dustin also hosts the Higher Ed Geek podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can learn more about Dustin, read the latest articles, and browse merch at higheredgeek.com. An IntelliFluence trusted blogger, Dustin is also on Patreon in addition to Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitch to name a few. Dustin, thanks so much for taking time out of your day to speak with us. We really appreciate it. Um, can you tell us the story of how you started Higher Ed Geek? Um, maybe touch on your own personal educational experiences as it kind of sounds like it was a source of inspiration. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was involved as a student leader in uh, undergrad at the University of Delaware. So I was a resident advisor uh, in the residence hall there. And uh, that kind of spurred me into wanting to work professionally uh, in higher education and I went to graduate school to get my master's in education, study more about uh, student development. And while I was in grad school um, is where so the inception of Higher Ed Geek came from, wanting to put myself out there, uh, share ideas, the things that I was learning, uh, and just kind of put myself out there in an authentic way that would allow for me to uh, hopefully just kind of move my career forward as I was graduating and getting my first actual full-time job in higher ed. but. Uh, yeah, I mean, my educational journey, just the short version, like I, I never knew what I was going to kind of make of myself. You know, I, I, would, I didn't do a lot in high school and uh, getting to college at the University of Delaware was a transformative experience for me and just like learning more about my identity and my potential and those sort of things. So that's always been a driver for me is to kind of give back but then just kind of broadly through other projects is sort of like helping others help students better, you know, through uh, my writing or podcasting and those sort of things. Very nice, very nice. Now, in the past, I've asked this question, and, and I get a lot of, well, I, I don't consider myself one, or I'm not, you know, so I'm rephrasing the question. Rather than, at what point did you realize you were an influencer, at, at what point did you realize you were influencing others? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it was the first times where, like, people would express to me clearly, where it's like, hey, I listened to your show, it was so great, I liked this episode, or, you know, people who are like, oh, yeah, I've seen your site, or I know of your site, so just the idea where, like, Obviously, I objectively knew that like they were getting, you know, views and downloads and that sort of thing. But like when you actually tangibly have someone who talks to you about what they got from what you do, um, it's like, wow, this is actually having an impact. It's not just sort of like, you know, because some people can kind of consume content, just sort of like, you know, you chew it up, spit it out. And, and it's that's that and that's fine. But uh, knowing that it kind of was also having that intended impact of having people learn and grow and be exposed to new things within uh, the higher ed world, uh, yeah, that was really meaningful for me because that obviously was the goal, really. So um, I was getting a lot out of it, so it meant a lot that others were as well. Wonderful, wonderful. And, and obviously the, the foundation of Higher Ed Geek is is education, but on your blog, you, you go further and you explain that the site's really focused on relevant and thoughtful dialogues. So who is the target audience for Higher Ed Geek and, and uh, what are some of the reoccurring topics on the site? Yeah, I mean, I think the primary audience is definitely higher ed professionals. You know, it's, it's kind of for us by it's going to, you know, like it's going to be really kind of uh, immersed in a lot of the lingo and things going on in the, the space uh, to sort of give back and sort of have that kind of cycle going of knowledge sharing. But um, I'd say it, I, I do imagine that a lot of people who are college students or interested in education just care about education, care about uh the space which you know i would imagine is a lot of people um you know they would find value in uh the things that i share as well um so i think uh the type of thing that i i post on the site could just be things about how to be successful in college which could be for any student or anybody who works with students or has a child who's a student you know uh and then other things that are maybe more kind of industry news uh and then just other more just kind of the purely educational side, uh, things that I'm kind of geeking out about, things that I'm learning that I want to share about other things that I uh, care about. So, um, and yeah, I mean, the content uh, 
you know, primarily as a blog, but I do post a lot of podcasts and um, other things that I do. If it's like a panel that I'm on or a conference session, I might, you know, share content from um, those avenues as well. Definitely. And, and when checking out your podcast, I noticed that you have about the same amount, you know, we're about 130 episodes in here on the spotlight. And I think you're right around there as well. What are some of the, uh, can you think of a couple memorable conversations you've had or a couple of guests that stand out over the years? Yeah. I mean, the first one that always comes to mind, it was definitely a very proud moment. They've had some really great milestones they've hit recently it was, um, with Ben Nelson, who heads up the Minerva project, they're a really innovative uh, player in the higher ed space that are basically bringing the best of liberal arts education that, you know, tends to be kind of like, you know, a cloister, you know, small private institution in the, you know, the woods somewhere, you know, how can you maybe expand on that, do it better, smarter, and do it kind of at scale online and, you know, across the world and, uh, you know, I'm you know, overly simplifying it, but like they have an incredible model. It was really a great honor to be able to uh, speak with uh, Ben Nelson about that. And then uh, there were others that, uh, you know, a lot of episodes lately have come about sort of serendipitously of like people just reaching out to be on the show, which like when I started, I had to kind of hustle and reach out to a lot of people. Um, so uh, a lot of the episodes that I've posted this year are just kind of special because it, it is that idea of kind of having influence or an impact that like, okay, people just know about this. Like, it, it's not like, you know, the biggest show in the world or those sort of things. It's a very just like independent, I do everything grassroots, but like, I think the right people know about it and people want to be a part of it. People want to create that content and share out their message. And, you know, it makes my life easier when they reach out to do that. So uh, ones this year that have explored a lot of different nuances, um, of higher education that I've just never hit on. And some of them that are coming top of mind that I really like that are releasing uh, as of the recording of this in the coming weeks. And I come back from my summer break, cover things like uh, uh, scholarship, like databases, you know, helping students like with their affordability of college, uh, international exchange programs. Uh, so those have been really cool just because they're, I, I, especially I know that I'm learning a lot. So I'm like, I'm sure there's other people that these are gap areas in their knowledge as well. So. Um, those have been really special as well. Uh, uh, not just, you know, I could talk to people about like digital education for every episode because it's like stuff I know and I love talking about it. And I know a lot of people that work in the space, but uh, having this avenue be a place where I can really explore all of the, the various depths of uh, higher ed and experiences that students can have to uh, make sure they're choosing like the right institution, the right program and the right modality and being able to uh, afford it and, you know, fund it in ways that are uh, sustainable for them. So, um, yeah, I guess that, that's all that comes to mind. For sure. That's great. So how do you structure your average day so you can get everything accomplished that, that you need to get accomplished? Because you have the you have the site, work in uh, digital higher ed, uh, you know, you have your uh, podcast as well as all your social media uh, networks. You, you know, you're on pretty much all the main ones. So how, so how do you, you know, do that? How do you structure your average day? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it could be hard. I think, you know, I've, I've given myself a lot of grace uh, in terms of, you know, everything I do is just, again, I kind of always use this sort of grassroots, you know, like anything I get to do, uh, you know, I kind of earn it myself, but I have to put the time in and I get to whatever I get to. So like I do uh, make sure kind of on a monthly basis to really try to you know, chart out reminders on my calendar of like, okay, every Wednesday you got to post the podcast. So it kind of like, you know, dings me to, you know, make sure that I'm doing that. Uh, chart out my whole podcast schedule, several episodes in advance. So I know that I'm recording with this person, that episode's going to post this time. You know, I have the whole year charted out of what the dates are going to be um, that I need to fill and sort of planning all that out. Um, so part of it is just like giving, giving that structure and planning ahead just calendar management and reminders and sort of notifications and those sort of things have been kind of a uh, huge help for me. And then part of it is just like, I, I've been doing this for a while, so I know how to kind of manage against deadlines and, you know, having that workflow to keep consistent. So like, it, it just kind of, for me, has naturally come with time of just kind of, uh, you know, doing my due diligence to like set those reminders to make sure that I'm like 
balancing and not stressing myself, I guess, because I could be posting more on social media, certainly. But like, I think the amount that I do is either my own content or other content that I'm finding interesting and I'm not bombarding people. So it feels as though it's sort of authentic and sort of, you know, just done in a sustainable uh, sort of cadence and sort of a way that feels uh relevant i guess where like because i think some people just post a lot just because it's like well yeah you might get more attraction if you're posting more often but uh i try to keep things fairly balanced and uh set up pretty good boundaries as well to um just not be constantly you know on my phone or sort of uh trying to like juggle three things at once it's like okay this morning i'm gonna do some social media this morning i'm gonna make sure the podcast is edited and then like you know now I'm going to do blog post for, you know, uh, whatever it is I need to do uh, for, you know, various projects that I work on. So I think those would be the ways that I kind of structure things out. And I, I don't plan, I guess, like too, too far in advance for anything other than the podcast, because for that, it just can be, you know, very hectic if it's like, I need an episode to po like, you know, post next week and I've got to chase people down, you know, uh, where it's like, can you record tomorrow's so that I can like get it ready and like, you know, less than a week or something. So that that's the area where I definitely have to make sure I'm really intentional about structuring my time. But otherwise, I try to take it on kind of like a month by month basis to make sure that I kind of check a lot of the boxes to keep everything active and engaged and updated. For sure, for sure. And so, so what are some short term goals you have for your site for, you know, for the next three or five years, you know, really, how, how would you like to expand? Or what would you like to do? Or any new ventures you'd like to move into? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, would love, I think, just because everything's been so kind of independent, and, uh, almost kind of like low budget. So I think like, you know, I've been trying to grow the show to get to a point to have like, long-term sponsors to sort of keep feeding into the show to grow that audience. Um, I'm hoping to do more uh, like live podcast recordings at conferences. Like if I work full-time remote and obviously, you know, we've all been isolated even more so uh, recently. So I've been very eager to get out to build community, you know, in professional organizations and uh, record that content live just for that exposure, but then be still able to kind of share it. Uh, on the podcast stream. So yeah, hopefully more podcast, uh, you know, live recordings, uh, you know, partnerships uh, for the show. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I would, I would hope to be able to do maybe like more, you know, short term or, or short form video content uh, that could go up on, you know, social channels or, or YouTube or something. And, and that would sort of, I think, kind of complete the trinity of like, you know, I do writing, I do podcasting. And then, you know, even if it's like, you know, I do the podcast like every other week, the idea of just like, you know, just on a set cadence, I can uh, create some video content as well. So um, just need to get some more like gear for that. I feel like to do it uh, uh, properly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so my last question of the day, I was, I was reading your bio and I see you're a craft beer lover. So I just have to ask, you know what? I, I'm a fellow craft beer lover myself. Um, what's your favorite style? Yeah, I mean, I lend myself more towards kind of the lighter stuff, like, you know, more a little bit more flavorful and kind of easy drinking. So like a good Pilsner, a good Kolsch, Whit beer, uh, those sort of things. So I'm always seeking out uh, good places locally. And it's a good, you know, sort of way to uh, travel around and see places wherever you go. So it's been a nice hobby. And I, I share it with my wife as well. Um, so yeah, we're trying to like visit a local spot in like every, uh, every state. So we're kind of keeping track of where we've been and where we want to go. Want to join IntelliFluence as an influencer for free? It's easy. Visit IntelliFluence.com, click on the Influencers link, and then click on the Join for Free button to sign up. You'll get immediate access to our influencer marketplace where you can browse relevant offers from brands and apply on the spot. Earn cash quickly by referring your friends and family. You'll also be eligible to receive attractive product and service pitches from brands. There's absolutely no cost to join as an influencer, so we hope you take advantage of our service. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date. That's it for now. We hope to see you soon.